At Miami Savings Bank, smart students bank smart. With your smart hometown checking account, you will enjoy no monthly service charges or minimum balance requirements. Direct deposit capability, online and mobile banking, mobile check deposit capability, over 32,000 fee-free ATMs nationwide, and much more. Plus, students 16 years of age and older can open an account. Visit Miami Savings Bank to open your account today. We are conveniently located in Miami Town, Harrison, and Oxford. Suspense. This is The Woman in Black, here to introduce Harrison High School's Creative Arts Theater production of Suspense. Tonight, as we conclude our Friday evening series on the air, Miss Alessia Vaughn graces our stage to appear in the study of terror, known as Sorry Wrong Number. Please stay tuned, for after the show, we have a special announcement from Miami Savings Bank. And so, it is with the story of Sorry Wrong Number and the performance of Miss Alessia Vaughn, we again hope to keep you in suspense. Your call, please. Operator, I've been dialing Murray Hill 70093 now for the last three quarters of an hour, and the line is always busy. I don't see how it could be busy that long. Will you try it for me, please? I will be glad to try that number for you. One moment, please. I don't see how it could be busy all this time. It is my husband's office, and he's working late tonight, and I'm all alone here in the house. My health is very poor, and I've been feeling so nervous all day. Ringing Murray Hill, 70093. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello? Is, is Mr. Stevenson there? Hello? 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 Hello, George? Yes, sir. This is George speaking. Uh, hello? Who's this? What number am I calling, please? I'm here with our client. Oh, good. Is everything okay? Is the coast clear for tonight? Yeah, George. He says the coast is clear for tonight. Okay, okay. Where are you now? In a phone booth. Don't worry. Everything's okay. Very well. You know the address? Yeah, yeah, I know. At 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around to the bar on 2nd Avenue for a beer. That's right. At 11 o'clock. I will make sure that all the lights downstairs are out. There should be only one light visible from the street. Yeah, yeah, I know. At 11.15, a train crosses the bridge. It makes a noise in case her window's open and she should scream. Oh, hello. What number is this, please? Okay, I understand, I tell you. That's 1115, the train. Yeah. You remember everything else, George? Yeah, yeah. I make it quick. As little blood as possible. <gasps> because our client does not wish to make her suffer long. That's right. You'll use a knife? Yes. A knife will be okay. And afterwards, I remove the rings and the bracelet and the jewelry and the bureau drawer because our client wishes it to look like a simple robbery. Don't worry. Everything's okay. I never m Oh, oh, how awful. How unspeakably awful. Your call, please. Up 
Operator, I've just been cut off. I'm sorry. What number were you calling? Why, it was supposed to be Murray Hill 70093, but it wasn't. Some wires must have crossed, and I was cut into a wrong number, and I I've just heard the most dreadful thing. Something, something about a murder. A and Operator, you simply have to retrace that call at once. I beg your pardon. May I help you? Oh, I know it was a wrong number, and, well, I had no business listening, but these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends, and they were going to murder somebody, some poor, innocent woman who was all alone in a house near a bridge. And we've got to stop them. We've got to... Uh, what number were you calling, please? <laughs> well, that doesn't matter. This was a wrong number, and you dialed it for me. Don't you mean to tell me you can't find out what number that was just now? What number did you call? Oh, why are you so stupid? What time is it? Do you mean to tell me you can't find out what that number was just now? I'll connect you with the chief operator. Oh, I think it's perfectly shameful. Now look, look, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I told you to try Murray Hill 70093 for me. You dialed it, but your finger must have slipped, and I was connected with some other number. And I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Now, I simply failed to see why you couldn't make that same mistake again, but on purpose, why you couldn't try to dial Murray Hill 70093 in the same sort of careless way. Murray Hill 70093? Yes. I'll try to get it for you. Well, thank you. Sorry, Murray Hill 70093 is busy. I'll call you in 20 minutes. Operator? 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 Your call, please. You didn't try to get that wrong number at all. I asked you explicitly, and all you did was dial correctly. I'm sorry, what number were you calling? Well, can't you, for once, forget what number I'm calling and do something for me? Now, I want to trace that call. It's my civic duty and your civic duty to trace that call and to apprehend these dangerous killers. And if you won't... I will connect you with the chief operator. Please! Oh, dear. This is the chief operator. Chief Operator, I want you to trace a call, a, a telephone call, immediately. I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be tracked down, because it was about a murder that someone's planning, a terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman, tonight, at 11.15. I see. Well, can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? I'm not certain. It depends. It depends on what? It depends on whether the call is still going. If it's a live call, we can trace it on the equipment. If it's been disconnected, we can't. Disconnected? If the parties have stopped talking to each other. Oh, but of course they must have stopped talking to each other by now. That was at least five minutes ago. And, well, they didn't sound like the type who would make a long call. Well... I can try tracing it. May I have your name, please? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. But listen... And your telephone number, please? Plaza 42295. But if you go on wasting all this time... Why do you want this call traced, please? Uh, what? I, well, no reason. I, I mean, I merely felt very strongly that something ought to be done about it. These men sounded like killers. They're, they're dangerous. They're going to murder this woman at 11.15 tonight. And, well, I thought the police ought to know. Have you reported this to the police? Uh, well, it, no. Uh, not yet. You want this call checked purely as a private individual? Yes, yes. But meanwhile... I'm sorry, Mrs. Stevenson. 
but I'm afraid we couldn't make this check for you and check the call just on your say-so as a private individual. We'd have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sakes. You mean to tell me I can't report that there's going to be a murder without getting tied up in all this red tape? Why, it's perfectly idiotic! <sighs> well, all right. I'll call the police. Thank you. I'm sure that would be the best way to... Ridiculous. Perfectly ridiculous. The thought of it. I, I can't see why I have to go to all this trouble. Oh. Your call, please. Uh, the police department. Get me the police department. Please. Thank you. Oh dear, do you have to dial? Can't you just ring them direct? Ringing the police department? I mean, seriously, if you think that you could dial, but no, just ring it quick. Hold over here. Police station, precinct 43, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police department? Ah, uh, this is Mrs. Stevenson. That's Mrs. Albert Smith Stevenson of 53 North Sutton Place. I'm calling up to report a murder. I mean, well, I, the, the murder hasn't been committed yet exactly, but I just overheard plans for it over the telephone, over a wrong number that the operator gave me. I've been trying to trace down the call myself, but everybody is so stupid. And, well, I guess in the end, you're the only people who can do anything. Yes, ma'am. It was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Two men were talking, and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. She, she lived in a, in a house near a bridge. Are, are you listening to me? Yes. <clears throat> oh, yes, ma'am. And there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to go around for a beer on 2nd Avenue. And there was some third man, a, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and, and use a knife? Well, it's, it's unearthed me dreadfully, and, and I'm not well, and I feel so oh, I see. When was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. Then, then you can do something? You do understand. What's your name, ma'am? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. And your address? 53 North Sutton Place. That's 53 North Sutton Place. That's near a bridge, the, the Queensboro Bridge, you know, and, and we have a private patrolman on our street. And, and Avenue, what was the number you were calling? Murray Hill, 70093. But that wasn't the number I ever heard. I mean, Murray Hill, 70093, is my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask me to come home. I, I am an invalid, you know, and it's the maid's night off, and... I hate to be alone, even though he says I'm perfectly safe as long as I have the telephone right beside my bed. Well, we'll look into it, Mrs. Stevenson, and see if we can check it with the telephone company. But the telephone company said they couldn't check the call if the party stopped talking. I've already taken care of that. Oh, you have? Yes, and personally, I feel you ought to do something far more immediate and drastic than just check the call. What good does checking the call do if they've stopped talking? By the time you've tracked it down, they'll already have committed the murder! Well, we'll take care of it. Don't you worry. Well, I'd say the whole thing calls for a search. A complete and thorough search of the whole city. And now, I'm very near the bridge, and I'm not far from 2nd Avenue, and I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent around a radio car to this neighborhood at once. And what makes you think the murder's gonna be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Well, I, uh, I don't know. Only the coincidence is so horrible. Second Avenue, the patrolman, the bridge. Second Avenue is a very long street, ma'am. And you know how many bridges there are in the city of New York alone? Yes, I know. Not to mention Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens, and the Bronx. I know that. How do you know there isn't some little house on Staten Island on some little Second Avenue you never even heard about? 
How do you know they're even talking about New York at all? But I heard the call on the New York dialing system. Maybe it was a long distance call you overheard. Oh, don't. Telephones are funny things. Look, lady, why don't you look at it this way? Supposing you hadn't broken in on that telephone call. Supposing you got in your husband the way you always do. You wouldn't be so upset, would you? Well, it, no, I suppose not. Only, it sounded so inhuman, so cold-blooded. A lot of murders are plotted in this city every day, ma'am. We managed to prevent almost all of them. But, but a clue of this kind is so vague, it isn't much more use to us than no clue at all. But surely you... Unless, of course, you have some reason for thinking this call was phony, and that someone may be planning to murder you. Me? Oh, oh no. I, I hardly think so. I, I mean, why should anybody? I'm alone all day and night. I see nobody except my maid, Eloise, and she's a big girl. She weighs 200 pounds, and she's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray, and, well, the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's crazy about me. He, he just adores me. He waits on me hand and foot. He scarcely left my side since I took sick, well, 12 years well, ago. Well, then, there's nothing for you to worry about. Now, if you just leave the rest to us, we'll take care of it. But what will you do? It's so late. It's nearly 11 now. We'll take care of it, lady. Will you broadcast it all over the city and send out squads and warn your radio cars to watch out, especially in suspicious Lady, I said we'd take care of it. Just now I've got a couple other matters here on my desk that require immediate attention. Good night, ma'am, and thank you. Oh, you, you idiot. Oh. Why did I hang up the phone like that? He'll think I am a fool. Why doesn't Albert come home? Why doesn't he? Why doesn't he come home? Why doesn't he come home? He leaves me all alone and I turn away. Your call, please. Operator, for heaven's sakes, what, will you ring that Murray Hill 70093 number again? Again, think what's keeping him so long. I will try it for you. Well, try, try. I don't see why he doesn't answer it. I'm sorry, Murray Hill 70093 is busy. I, I can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. If I could only get out of this bed for just a little while, if I could get a breath of fresh air, just lean out the window and, and see the street. Hello? Albert? Hello? 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 What's the matter with this phone? Hello? 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 He oh, for heaven's sakes, who is this? Hello? 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 Oh, who's trying to call me? Why doesn't she answer? Your call, please. Hello? Operator, I don't know what's the matter with this telephone tonight, but it's positively driving me crazy. I have never seen such inefficient, miserable service. Now, now look, I'm an invalid, and I'm very nervous, and I'm not supposed to be annoyed. But if this keeps on much longer... What seems to be the trouble, please? Well, everything's wrong. I haven't had one bit of satisfaction out of one call I've made this entire evening. The whole world could be murdered for all you people care. And now my phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing every five seconds. And when I pick it up, there's no one there. 
I'm sorry. If you will hang up, I will test it for you. I don't want you to test it for me. I want you to put that call through, whatever it is, at once. I'm afraid I cannot do that. You can't. <laughs> and why? Why, may I ask? The dial system is automatic. <sighs> if someone is trying to dial your number, there's no way to check if the call is coming through the system or not, unless the person who's trying to reach you complains to his particular operator. Well, of all the stupid, <laughs> and meanwhile, I've got to sit here in my bed, suffering every time that phone rings, imagining everything. I will try to check the trouble for you. Check it! Check it! That's all anybody can do. What's the use of talking to you? You're so stupid! Oh, I'll fix her. Of all the impudent... How dare she speak to me like that? How dare she? I'll call the operator. Why did it take so long? Your call, please. Young woman, I don't know your name, but there are ways of finding you out, and I'm going to report you to your superiors for the most unpardonable rudeness and insolence it's ever been my privilege. Give me the business office at once. You may dial that number direct. <sighs> dial it direct? I'll do no such thing. I don't even know the number. The number is in the directory. Or you may secure it by dialing information. Listen here, you. What's the use? Oh, dear. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I'm going out of my mind. Out of my. Hello? Hello? Stop ringing me, do you hear? Answer me. Who is this? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? Who's calling me? What are you doing it for? Now stop it, stop it, stop it! Hello? Hello? I, I if you don't stop ringing me, I, I'm going to call the police. Do you hear? The police! <sighs> Only Albert would come home. Let it ring. Let it go on ringing. It's a trick of some kind. I, I won't answer it. I won't, I won't, I won't. Even if it goes on ringing all night. Ugh, you ring. Go ahead and ring. No. No, what's the matter? Why did they stop ringing all of a sudden? Oh, what time is it? Where did I put that clock? Oh, here it is. Five to eleven. Oh, they've decided something. They're sure I'm home. They heard my voice answer them just now. That's why they've been ringing me. Why no one has answered me? I'll call the operator again. Call, please. Where were you just now? Why didn't you answer at once? Give me the police department! I'm sorry. The line is busy. I will call busy? you. Busy? But that's impossible! The police department can't be busy! That there must be other lines available. The line is busy. I will try and get them for you later. No, no! I've got to speak to them now! Or it may be too late! I've got to talk to someone! 
What number do you wish to speak to? I don't know, but there must be someone to protect people besides the police department. A, a detective agency? A you will find agencies listed in the classified directory. But I don't have a classified. I mean, I, I, I'm too nervous to look it up. And, and I, I, I don't know how to use the... I'll connect you with information. Perhaps she will be able to help you. No, no! Oh, you're being spiteful, aren't you? You don't care, do you? What happens to me, I could die and you wouldn't care. Plaza 42295. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm sorry. This, this is Plaza 42295. This is Western Union. I have a telegram here for Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Is there anyone there to receive the message? I'm, I am Mrs. Stevenson. The telegram is as follows. Mrs. Albert Stevenson, 53 North Sutton Place, New York, New York. Darling, terribly sorry. Tried to get to you for last hour, but line busy. Leaving for Boston tonight, 11 p.m., on urgent business. Back tomorrow afternoon. Keep happy. Love. Signed, Albert. Oh, no. Do you wish us to deliver a copy of the message? N no. N no, thank you. Thank you, madam. Good night. Good night. Oh. Oh, no! No! Believe it! He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Not when he knows I'll be all alone. It's some trick. Some fiendish trick. I could call someone. I don't understand. Some trick. Why doesn't she? Your call, please. Operator, try that Murray Hill 70093 number for me. Just once more, please. You may dial that number direct. Oh. Seven, zero, zero, nine, three. And where is he? No. I don't understand. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Oh, Albert, how could you? How could you? How could you? I, I can't be alone tonight. I can't. If I'm alone one more second, I'll go mad. I don't care what he says or what the expense is. I'm a sick woman. I'm entitled. I am entitled. Information, may I help you? I, I want the telephone number of Henchley Hospital. Henchley Hospital? Do you have the street address? No, no, but it's somewhere in the 70s. It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Uh, Henchley, H-E-N-C. One moment, please. Please hurry, and please, what is the time? You may find out the time by dialing Meridian 7121. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I have no time to be dialing. The number of Henchley Hospital? is Butterfield 70105. Butterfield 70105. Henshley Hospital, good evening. Nurses Registry. Who is it you wish to speak to, please? I want the nurse's registry, at once. I want a trained nurse 
and I want to hire her immediately for the night. I see. And what is the nature of this case, madam? Uh, nerves. I, I'm very nervous. I need soothing, companionship. You see, my husband is away, and I'm... Have you been recommended to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No, but I don't really see why all this catechizing is necessary. I just want a trained nurse. I was a patient in your hospital two years ago, and after all, I do expect to pay the person for attending me. We quite understand that, madam, but these are war times, you know. Well... Registered nurses are very scarce just now, and our superintendent has asked us to send people out only on cases where the physician in charge is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm a sick woman. I'm, I'm very upset. Very. I'm all alone in this house, and I'm an invalid. And, and tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully. In fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. I see. Well, I'll speak to Miss Phillips as soon as she comes in. And what is your name, madam? Uh, Miss Phillips, and when do you expect her in? Well, I really couldn't say. She went out to supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? But, but it's not 11 yet. Oh no, my clock has stopped. I thought it was running down. What time is it? Just 15 minutes past 11. What? What was that? What was what, madam? That, that click. Just now, in my own telephone, as though someone had lifted the receiver off the hook of the extension telephone downstairs. Well, I didn't hear it, madam. Now about this. But I did. There's someone in this house. Someone downstairs in the kitchen, and they're, they're listening to me now. They're... Oh, I won't pick it up. I won't. I won't let them hear me. I'll be, I'll be quiet, and they'll think, oh, but, but if I don't call someone now while they're still down there, there'll be no time. Oh, call someone. Come on, pick up. No. Your call, please. Operator? Operator? I'm in desperate trouble. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Please speak louder. I don't dare. I, there's someone listening. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. But you've got to hear me. Oh, please. You've got to help me. There's someone in this house. Someone who's going to murder me. And you've got to get in touch with... Oh, there it is. There it is. Did you hear it? He's put it down. He's put down the extension phone. He's coming up. Coming up the stairs. Give me the police department. The police department. Police department. Give it to me. One moment, please. I will connect you. I can hear him. He's nearer. Oh, I hear him. I hear him. Hurry. 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 Police station, Sergeant Martin speaking. <clears throat> Police station, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police station, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police station, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police department? Oh, I'm sorry. Must have got the wrong number. Don't worry. Everything's okay.
Suspense. This has been Sorry Wrong Number, featuring Miss Alessia Vaughn, Miss Anna Lay, Miss Courtney Ruckelhoff, Mr. Robbie Mumphrey, and Miss Ashley Ruckelhoff. This is your narrator, Megan Gears, the woman in black, thanking all of you listeners for tuning in with us the past four weeks and recounting these stories of suspense, written by Lucille Fletcher. As our tales come to a close, I would like to thank our sound crew for being here alongside us for all the shows. This is the woman in black, signing off for the last time, hoping we were successful in keeping you all in suspense. Miami Savings Bank is pleased to announce that Brandon Clotter is the recipient of our 2021 scholarship. Brandon is very deserving of this award, and we wish him all the best in his future endeavors. We would also like to thank all of the scholarship applicants. The decision was very difficult, as there were many deserving students. Congratulations, Brandon. Attention homeowners. At Miami Savings Bank, we can help you put the equity in your home to good use. You can make some of those home improvements you have been thinking about, pay off those high interest credit cards, or even go on a much needed vacation. Stop in or call one of our loan specialists today to get started. Miami Savings Bank is conveniently located in Miami Town, Harrison, and Oxford.